Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, October the 5th, 2013. And we're all here. Another week has flown by. Welcome everyone, welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and uh, I'm coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, I will, well, before I officially pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor, I would like to say we are having a very unseasonably warm beginning of October. Summer weather. Hazy, hot, and humid. All right. Where is my, me trusty bosun's whistle, authentic bosun's whistle, that I got in Newport, Rhode Island, and back in the, uh, I think early 90s, I think, or late 80s. Ready to pipe? My co-host and mentor aboard our progressive liberal starship. Arr, well, welcome aboard, matey. Arr. How, uh, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Fine, well, I think. <coughs> I may lose my voice here. Um, okay, you have enough uh, beverage? I got water. Okay. I get water here. You, do you have enough? I got enough, otherwise I have to make a pee pee. Yeah, you don't want to go, you don't want to go too, too high volume on that. I know what that's like, especially if I drink beer. Okay. I had a little beer. Good. Twelve oh. dogs of Christmas. Three dog night? Twelve dogs. Twelve dogs of Christmas. You know, I'm so, I was telling um, Dr. Bill, I'm so happy concerning the, the popularity and the rapid growth of craft beer, of real good old world style high quality craft beer from microbreweries <coughs> and I would say all over the world and every state in the United States has their own top microbrewery. <laughs> they they're all over the place. Some states have several, but there's always a microbrewery locally that you can visit. Drink local, just like food should be produced locally, and uh, you can Google it. They have websites that tell you, they give you the location of the microbreweries in your state. So, and, and they have the, the funniest names, the most unusual names, and the most unusual labels. There, a lot of them are real cute. Like actually, there's a, there's a micro uh, uh, brewed ale, I think it's an uh, in India, an IPA, India Pale Ale, called the, uh, the Bosun's Whistler. With a cartoon of a of a, a blonde dressed in a sailor outfit with, with large breasts Ooh. and cleavage. And what does that have to do with a boatswain's whistle? Well, they gotta they gotta add sex to to a, to, to to peddle liquor. It's like it's like car car commercials and uh, and liquor. It's always a hot looking young female involved. What about Mister Doseki? Uh, Doseki. Now, now he does. He's doing a commercial about with two women, and he's talking about getting their clothes off. You know the two women with the black Zorro masks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Doseki. He's <coughs> getting a little uh, risque now. You know that's the uh, the most interesting man alive. The guy with the gray beard. Stay thirsty, my friends. Uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Now. I am thirsty. After talking about. <laughs> the beer oh um, I want to correct something that I should have done in last week's show I did not mention the CEO's name but it is Nancy Brinker ah. 
founder of the Susan Komen Foundation, who stepped down from being the CEO, I believe in August, but still takes a whopping $684,000 per year in salary that much of it should be going towards breast cancer research. Most of it, in my opinion, should be going to the charity, just like the all the salaries of these presidents and CEOs of all of the major charities should be ashamed of themselves taking in such astronomical salaries with a fundraising organization. They have no shame. Shame on you. They have no remorse. They don't really care about the cause, do they? No. In reality. You know, and... Uh, the cause and, is them. And it should be voluntary work. And this massive administrative fee is totally bogus. I mean, with some of these charities, like five cents goes to the cause on a dollar, give or take. You're lucky. It's absurd. It's absurd. Their cause is themselves, their mortgage, and their Mercedes Benz. Speaking, speaking of uh, a cause being uh, being all for themselves and selfishness, uh, let us uh, switch over to. Uh, the poster boys and girls of selfishness and greed and stinginess, the Republican Congress. <clears throat> Congresswoman, uh, a Republican, I believe she's from uh, North Carolina, Renee Elmers, not the Elmers glue, she spells it with two L's. Although I would like to put Elmers glue on her teeth mm. and glue her jaw shut, her, her mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Congresswoman Republican, Congresswoman Republican Renee Elmers of the Carolinas answered a reporter when she was asked if she would be willing to give up her paycheck during the government shutdown that she helped cause. And her answer was, uh, myself and the, all the other Republicans in Congress well, we need our paychecks, and that's the bottom line, period. That's the way it is. That's the bottom We need, oh, but the 800,000 government workers that got laid off, they don't need their paychecks. No. They don't, oh, they don't I need it. I told you how many times, and the people. These people are elitists. Why do we have to accept? Because they say so. Exactly. Not, not for any logical I mean, a, a reason, thinking. right? That's any logical thing. reason? Any logical reason Not why? Not on our part. So they think they're better. But on their part. They think they're better than everyone else. Yes. Because they're they saying. say so. Yeah. Because they have the moolah. They need their paycheck. They need it, even though they don't really work. You don't. They don't work. You hear me? Two or three days a month. To, Forty-two and they, times to repeal Obamacare. Not once. Yeah. Did they put up a law to bring back Glass Steagall? Nope. Yes, yeah, so they are, they are repealicans, uh, uh, um, they uh, don't work, they do not work the two or three days per month uh, that they, they show up at the Capitol building, they repeal and they just bitch and complain, you know, and uh, they never have enough money and according to uh, Renee Elmers, who is the this week's inductee into our uh, official Hall of Shame. Uh, she just needs her paycheck, and that's the bottom line. She needs it. But I guess mainstream America doesn't need anything. And the kids on WIC, they don't need their food. And the, and the kids on, on, on WIC and uh, with food stamps is SNAP, right? Yeah, SNAP and Head Start. Right. All, all, the, all, the, all the low income children, I mean children of low income families and children of veterans. Ah. They don't need any, they don't need it, but Renee Elmers needs her income. And she, I, I, would, I would take it Renee Elmers is loaded with loot, with, with dough, with Filthy booty. lucre. Well, ill-gotten gains. Yeah. If she's a Republican congresswoman, it's the, ill there's a good chance that her, her high income is composed of ill-gotten gains. And that includes for any of those conservatives, even in the Senate. Uh, uh, good news is, um, 
let's see, uh, the March Against Monsanto is doing quite well. Uh, we have uh, the state of California, let me salute Governor Jerry Brown. Governor Jerry Brown has legalized industrial hemp in the state of California. I salute Democratic Governor, uh, the legend Jerry Brown, Moonbeam Brown. He legalized industrial hemp. It's about time that we get at least one major state to legalize industrial hemp. And then, and of course, there are some states that passed the law of concerning labeling. Good for them. I'm not sure which ones did. There's not a lot of them, but they, you know, slowly but surely, the protesting and the outrage seems to be working. But it takes a progressive liberal governor like Jerry Brown to use some common sense and intelligence to legalize industrial hemp. And, you know, of course, you know, medical marijuana. Might as well throw that in. Now, last on my little tirade, um, <coughs> New Jersey's minimum wage just went up one dollar mm. to a whopping eight dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. Big damn deal. How did Christie allow that? And the Republicans are complaining about it too. Eight dollars and twenty-five cents an hour is still far below the cost of living. Far below it. Uh, whatever happened to the required eleven dollars and change an hour that the country is, you know, pushing for? Oh no, that's not good for Christie, right? That's no good. It's not good for business. Yeah. Well, yeah, because even they're... though wages are what. Uh, tax deductible. Tax deductible. You hear that, people? Tax. You hear that, crybaby uh, uh, conservatives, re Republicans? Tax deductible, and uh, you know they forget the fact that the employee is kind of the backbone of of the income of their business, and without the employees, where where are your business? You know, I mean, they're providing a service for you. And you want to pay them a measly eight dollars and twenty-five cents an hour? That's not gonna, hey, that's bigger not gonna, profits, man. That's not going to cut it. Bigger profits, less taxes. Here we, there we go again about selfishness. I have mine, and I don't care if you have yours or not. It's American way. You're on your own. American way? That's the evil way. That's the devil's economics. You hear me? They don't recognize that. I don't care what they recognize. It's 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 reality. It's what is. No, not what not but what they you don't go by what is. Not what they perceive to be what is. It's what is. Turn on Fox News and you'll see. They perceive They don't go by what is. They perceive everything. Like I told someone on Facebook last night. Yeah. We may be entitled to our own opinions. Right. But we are not entitled to our own facts. That's very, I, I saved that. I, I remember seeing that and that's very intelligent. Yeah. But that's see, what they do. They come up with their own facts. You see uh, uh, Billy Bones over here, Mr. LaParka? He's, I'm touching him. He, he's tangible. He exists. He's hanging here, clinging and clanging away. So if a Republican comes around and says, oh, you got Kermit the Frog hanging up here. Why? Because the rich Republican says that's Kermit the Frog? I have to accept that that's Kermit the Frog? Seems the way it is. Over on Fox News. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? it oh, I heard somebody had uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch the Bitch McConnell, Turtle Face, and uh, another Republican on video expressing that they really, they lie to the American people and they really don't care. They. Yeah, they, somebody caught him, like like they caught uh, uh, Mitt Romney uh, back then. Trouble is... What is as, the trouble? As I've been saying for years and years and years. Yes. These Republicans tell us what they want to do. For instance, they want to destroy the United States government. 
True. They want to make it so small they can drown it in the bathtub. True. They've been telling them, uh, telling us this for years. Now when they try to do it, we don't believe them. We want to blame the Democrats. We want to blame Obama. Obama. Obama caused the shutdown. They haven't stopped scapegoating and nitpicking on Obama ever since he got elected, ever since he was sworn in. They're, they're, re, they're, they're relentless, the Republicans. And they're going to impeach him. Impeach him for what? What about throwing out... Benghazi fizzled. What about... The IRS fizzled. What about impeaching all the dead wood in Congress that, that doesn't do any work for the $175,000 no. salary? No, they, they just like to impeach people for getting a blowjob and, and, and lying about it. That's their idea of impeachment. Yeah. They don't have no idea of high crimes and misdemeanors. Did you uh, see that banner of um, uh, President Jimmy Carter where he says uh, to the Republicans, um, he says that uh, don't, if, if you don't believe in helping the poor, since you don't believe in helping the poor, then stop, uh, stop saying that you represent a Christian nation or that you exactly. want that you want a Christian nation. Exactly, because their Christianity is made up. Because it's, it's hypocritical. Does not come from the Bible. It's hypocritical. Does not come from Jesus. Their Christianity. It's it's a phony, hypocritical, counterfeit Christianity. Correct. Right. And it's about time that we start calling a spade a spade right. and calling out these people and exposing them for what they are. Okay? Yeah. Well, on that on that note, let us sink our teeth into oh. these readings. Don't don't read any that you already read from last week. We'll, we'll cut out like th uh, five minutes before three p.m. We'll cut out a little, just a little. They bit. are just looking for a place to crash. Oh really? This winter, all that's required is a little heat. You tell me, it's another bird article. And a tiny space to hang their antennas. They're not even asking for one lousy meal. No. Yes, it's October. Which means stink bugs are looking oh. to get out of the field I, and into your home. I, I, I heard I heard this uh, on the news last night. The stink bugs are here. Why don't they all migrate to uh, the Capitol building? To the <laughs> Where there are unpleasant odor. They occasionally walk through your house. You wouldn't notice the stink bugs in the Capitol building, believe me, because it stinks to begin with. A large number of stink bugs were reported this summer infesting farms in South Jersey. Yep. According to Rutgers scientists. You can't crush them because then they stink. Whether there will be an overwhelming home invasion of the little critters this autumn, in North Jersey is still being determined. A warmer than usual spring this year may have contributed to the high numbers expected in the coming months. Due to the federal government shutdown this week, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's great stink bug count is on hiatus. Really? Yeah. Um, I um, I've seen them. They they kind of look like a like a weevil, like a boll weevil, whatever. A weevil, which is a, a um, po have a pointy face, pointy little pecker, and a, and a rounded body. Like picture. Oh, all right, like a beetle. Except they're flat. They, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. Well, they're 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 ba they're pretty much harmless. Unlike the killer giant hornets in Asia, Japan, and uh, and China, who have uh, they've been attacking people as of late. 
I don't know if you have something on that. That's been in the news. CNN uh, uh, did a story on it, and they're they're really big. They're like they don't even look real. They look like a Japanese monster movie. They're huge. They're hornets, and they're they're like hornets on steroids. Very surprised that they there's no reading on this. But uh, yeah, you, you imagine a regular hornet? They'll they'll chase you and they'll sting you over and over. But this is a big sucker, and they look mean. So uh, I never knew they existed, but they do. I'm always learning something new every time. Uh, aside from the hornet sting, I just want to add one more inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. And it is, of course, the uh, predominantly Republican Congress. Uh, I want to induct you people for actually applauding the execution of a, uh, an unarmed single mother. And you know what I'm talking about. Dr. Bill, the woman who crashed into the White House gate, and they, and they, and this unarmed single mother who had uh, mental health issues was uh, shot by, by the big macho men with the sophisticated. Uh, she used her car as a weapon. Rifles. Huh? She used her car as a weapon. Did she try to hit somebody, run over somebody? Yeah, police. She tried to run over the police? Yeah, did they ever think of shooting out the tires? Yeah, this, this, yeah, this woman. Well, this woman got fired from uh, her job as a uh, in a dental dentist's office, right? Never she, heard of that. I did. I heard of it. I heard. She didn't get fired. Yeah, she did. Why? Well, then why they lie on on, on the news? They said because she got this fired. Is incomplete. News. Stanford, Connecticut, right? She's from Stanford. No. She, they say that she had suffered from postpartum depression. Okay. And that she had her boyfriend about seven months ago called up 911 that she was delusional and he was afraid of the baby, which was five months old. Okay, at the time. now did 911, did they send anybody then, over to check on her? Whatever. Then. It is reported that she had delusions that Obama was communicating with her and was stalking her. Oh, she's, she's, she was gone, man. She was out there. And I heard nothing of being fired. She's, she's, she's loony, man. But they could have shot out the tires. <laughs> well, why the hell she in the morning uh, drives from Connecticut to Washington, D.C.? To do what she did, who the hell knows? You know, they, there is a, a rifle that will take out, that would stop a vehicle when you fire it into the grill. I think, believe it's called a Barrett 50 uh, caliber rifle oh, yeah. at the military. All you have to do is just shoot at the grill, man. The woman's unarmed. Apprehend her and put her in a booby hatch. Put her in a straitjacket. Well, I'm sure they got the big excuses because it was like 12 shots. Oh, really? Oh, but they wanted an excuse to plug, to plug somebody. Probably. Yeah, they wanted an excuse. Yeah, their their bullets were collecting dust, so they wanted they needed a, a target. Try to move around. Target practice. Yeah. This is this. Uh, anyway, continue. The surveys participants who record how many stink bugs are camping on homes in exteriors have no place to send their results because the USDA website has been dark since Tuesday. We don't have enough data to compare year to year right now. It's unfortunate that the shutdown happened right now in the middle of the count. The good news is that when stink bugs get into your home, all they want to do is hibernate. Well, yeah, well, the, the stink is just probably merely a, a defense. They don't breed or feed during this period. 
they're not an invasive uh, species. They're, they're um, it's, it's not like the the infamous German cockroach. <laughs> and they don't carry disease harmful to humans. They're just they're harmless insects that are not considered pestilence. They're not pests. I've killed about five of them. And proud of it. Who is this idiot? Who is this jerk that said they're proud? I said it. Oh, you said it? Yes. What do you mean you're proud of it? What what did, what did they ever do to you? One of them fell off the plant. Who cares? And fell down. Do you kill spiders? Some. Why? Because there might be too many. I just killed one in the sink. Well, they're predatory. A baby. But they're... I killed a baby. But they're good. They're predatory. I leave one or two. They find their way out. There's one right over there. They're not going to Take a harm. look. In the window over there. You'll well, see him. What do you think? I leave him alone. Well, what do you think? They're like a brown recluse or black widows? They're not going to hurt you. I don't know. I leave him alone for any other bugs that come in the house that he can eat up. Well, usually they like you know? to make their their home base in the uh, in the pothos ivy up here, you know, which is a smart idea because that's where the lights are. Winter retreat. When they congregate together, they can secrete odorous chemicals, a defensive mechanism that has been described as everything from a strong cilantro smell. That's good. I like cilantro. To a Gunk when they really get scared. I don't like skunk smell. I love cilantro. Homeowners are advised to caulk any gaps caulk, caulk, caulk. in seals around the house and doors and windows. That's how they get in. Well, the older homes definitely have gaps as well as bad insulation. And make sure the attic vents are fully screened. Otherwise, stink bugs will fly in. Or squirrels would decide to make a giant squirrel house out of your attic. If they make it into your house, avoid crushing the insect, which will give off a strong odor. Oh, man. Use a small vacuum to collect them and release them outside or flush them down the toilet. I Larger see. vacuums yeah. could crush the bugs in their rotors and release the smell. I see a lot of centipedes in the, in the basement sick. You know these uh, harmless northern centipedes? They come up through the pipe. Yeah, yeah. Unlike the venomous giant centipedes of the tropics, which uh, my brother-in-law is Vietnamese giant centipede mysteriously just passed away. Oh! Show some respect for the giant centipede. But you can't. They're nasty. They're nasty animals. They're like, they're for, they're for a display creature. They're not for cuddling or handling. But they'll nail you. They got like these mandibles, these big sharp mandibles that they'll eat a, a mouse for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, a praying mantis, which I happen to love, the praying mantis, uh, a large praying mantis can can eat a an invertebrate. Uh, I mean, a, a, a mouse or a, a small lizard or a goldfish. I see. I seen a video where the the uh, the mantis just scooped a goldfish out of the water and and started eating it live. They're not that big. Huh? They're not that big. What, the mantis? Mantis. Are you kidding me? The green, no. the Chinese green mantis? The Chinese green mantis? That's it. They, no way. The they, head, maybe, as big as my little fingernail. No. V-shaped.